Spirit, come fall afresh on me. Come wake me from my sleep. As I watched those words and as I sang those words and I listened to those words, I wondered how true that is in our lives. Wake me from my sleep. Let me ask you this question this morning. Are you asleep? Do you need a fresh falling of the Spirit into your life? Are you awake? Individually, are you awake? Corporately as a church, are we awake to what the Spirit is doing around us? We're going to look this morning at the Holy Spirit as John shares with us, as Jesus shares with us through John, um, his departing and his leaving with us the Holy Spirit. We're going to back up a little bit and go to uh, earlier in the discourse with his disciples as Jesus talks a few times about the Holy Spirit, beginning in, in the 14th verse, or the 14th chapter. We looked at these not th- that long ago. John 14, verse 15 through 17, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells within you and will be in you. So he dwells within us. If you love me, obey my words, obey my commandments. That's not easy to do on your own. I mean, um, be nice if it was. Be nice if it was that person that kind of always is is getting you, um, that you could love him as God commands us to love. Um, If if your spouse kind of, I know this never happens to any of you, um, your spouse kind of gets under your skin, you know, um, we know how to push those buttons, don't we? Um, But we'd never do that. Um, But again, to love as Christ loved us, to obey his word, Sometimes I think to obey that word, to love as he loved us, we need a helper. And luckily, he gave us that. He didn't leave us alone, but he gave us the spirit of truth. He gave us one who would guide us in how we should live. In that same chapter of John, in verse 26, he says, these things, actually in 25, these things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, bringing to you your remembrance all that I have said to you. That prompter, that one who will remind us about what God has done for us. How often do you need a reminder that God is there, that he's working in your life, that he has your good as his best intention? And sometimes we need a reminder. Um, every spring, I go to spring training with two other guys, and uh, a different person each year is in charge of, of the trip and everything that we do. And we try to do some things other than baseball. And so a couple years ago, we went to a uh, um, Jimmy Buffett concert. And... Uh, um, so I'm guessing he was probably like 76, 75, 76 um, when we went to the concert. Um, and I was kind of, in- it was kind of interesting because you know that he's been so- singing these songs for 50 years, right? So he must know them. Um, and I, I, again, I know he's 75, 76, which to me is very young now. Um, if I was 10 or 11, I would tell you that's very old. Now that's gotten much younger. Um, But we just happened to be sitting in a place where we could see um, the prompter. And I thought, that's really weird. This guy's been singing these songs for 50 years, um, and he's got this prompter in front of him. And I thought, this is like going to karaoke. You know, this is like Jimmy Buffett sings his own songs karaoke style. Um, But he needed that prompter. He needed that prompter to keep him on track. Now, again, I, I know he knew those songs by heart, but just in case, there's that, that prompter if you, 
if you get off track, um, to get you back where you need to be. And the Holy Spirit for us is that prompter. Let me tell you what the Spirit, let me tell you what God has done for you in your life. Let me remind you of all the good things that God has done for you. And then in 15, 26, and 27, it says, But the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness to me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. So he's going to tell us, again, he's going to bear witness of what the Father is doing. And then we're going to bear witness because we've seen what the Father has done. We've seen what God has done through His Son. Are you bearing witness? Are you a witness to what God is doing in your life? One of the people that I was reading said that in this world there are, there are believers, there are Christians, there are non-Christians, and those are the people who just decide they don't want to believe in God. And then there are the anti-Christians who have decided that you shouldn't believe in Him either and they're going to do whatever they can to try to trip you up or to try to keep you from being able to believe. Are you bearing witness in your workplace? Are you bearing witness in your home? Are you bearing witness in your school or your home group? Are you bearing witness for what God has done in your life? The Spirit comes. The Spirit is here to give us that ability, that desire to be that witness for Him. Let's pray and then we'll get into John 16, beginning in verse 5. Let's pray. Father, we thank You. We thank You for the Spirit of truth. We thank You for a Spirit that teaches, that reminds us, that bears witness to us. Father, help us. Help us to know anew, to be refreshed. And Father, help us to bear witness of who You are and what You do. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives to direct us, to watch over us. For it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. John chapter 16, beginning in verse 5, actually beginning in, in 4. Um, but I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may re remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, who will see me no and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. And he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And that the, all that the Father has is mine. And therefore, I have said these things to you. Take what is mine and declare it to you. I tell you these things now while I'm with you. And you need to know these things because I'm leaving. I'm leaving. It's never easy to talk about the end of life. And probably even more so for the disciples who see Jesus and they have an understanding of, of what they think He's to do. 
what they think he's living for. And he says, very soon now, I'm leaving. And I'm going away. I'm going to the Father. And now, none of you ask me where I'm going. Well, they've already asked him that, right? Peter asked him that at one point in this discourse. Thomas asked him, where are you going? But at this moment, that's not on their minds. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I go away, the helper will come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Um, Somebody said that this is like um, a boyfriend and a girlfriend when one of them says to the other, it's not you, it's me. You know, I'm leaving, but it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. Well, it is to have to do with him because he knows that he has to go back to be with the Father. And then until, until and unless he goes to be with the Father, the Holy Spirit can't come. But when he goes, he will send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be there. Be for us. Be in us. To show us the way. And he says, first of all, in the issue of sin, verse 9, concerning sin because they do not believe in me. The world doesn't believe. Think of your co-workers, family members, neighbors. There are many who don't believe. They can't see what God has done. He's going to convict the world of sin. He's going to convict the world of where they are and what they stand for. And to recognize what it means to believe in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. He's going to convict the world. It's not our role to convict, is it? The Holy Spirit can take care of that. But boy, we like to do that. Or to judge. Concerning righteousness in verse 10, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Righteousness, not the world's standard of righteousness, but God's standard of righteousness. The group went to Sweden um, to share in one of the churches there. And they came from a denomination that uh, didn't believe in drinking alcohol. And the pastor said, you know, he understood his his church's understanding of that and and belief of that, but he said, I also had a personal conviction against consuming alcohol. Um, He said, we got to the the church where we were staying at. We were at the pastor's home, and we were having dinner, and he was pouring beer for everybody. He said, no, I, I, I don't drink. What do you mean you don't drink? We don't, we don't drink alcohol. So, probably had a little conversation about that. Next morning, the pastor's wife said, I'd like a cup of coffee. People from Sweden said, you drink coffee? Oh, we'll pray for you. So, but that's, that's the world. You know, those are those things that we get wrapped up in, but those are worldly things. The Father comes to share with us a righteousness, a righteousness about his word and about him and about our place. Paul says in Philippians, the third chapter, beginning in verse 7, but whatever I have gained, I count a loss for Christ's sake. And we know that, that he'd gained a lot. We know that Paul had seen a lot and done a lot. 
And he says, I, I give that up for Christ's sake. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For, this sake, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So Paul says, listen, I gave up everything that I had. I counted it as rubbish. And we know that at the beginning when we first meet Saul, um, and as Paul shares his testimony, he talks about the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm a Jew of the Jews. I, am, I sat at the feet of the great teachers. But I gave it all up. I gave it all up so I could know the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord. I suffered the loss of all things, and I counted them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. How much stuff do you have that's rubbish that you think is amazing? How much have you trusted in things that you think are amazing, but it's really rubbish? It's the things of this world and not the things of eternity. God's standard of righteousness and not our own. Verse 11. I guess I should go back to John 16, verse 11. The judgment. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world is judged. The prince of the world was defeated on the cross. <clears throat> if Christ doesn't go, if Christ doesn't die on the cross, if Jesus doesn't die on that cross, not only does the Holy Spirit not come, but we're still not set free. Satan is judged. And we're set free. We can accept what Jesus did and believe in Him and know Him and walk with Him. Again, we want to judge those around us. We want to look at them with our own eyes and not as Christ sees them. Then in 12 through 15, he talks about being an authentic guide. <clears throat> I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, and therefore I said, and he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So the guide, the Holy Spirit, lets us know who, who, more about who Christ is, more about what God has done in our lives. He points us to the Father and not to himself. The need for a guide. Uh, some years ago, uh, Cindy and I were in Colorado, and we went whitewater rafting. And uh, uh, neither of us had, had done much. We'd done some stuff in canoes, but never in a, in a raft on a river. And uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, the four of us, had a guide, and we went out onto the water. And uh, one of the first things he said to us is, don't do anything that I don't tell you to do. And if I say, you know, row on the right, then the people on the right row. If I say row on the left, the people on the left row. And if I say everybody rows, everybody rows. And if I don't tell you to do something, don't do it. Well, uh, I knew that whitewater rafting had, had, you know, you one through five. And uh, honestly, I thought probably when we were going to go, we we're going to be on these like twos and threes, maybe some fours here and there. <clears throat> well, instead, we were on 
fours and too many fives. And uh, um, Jeff kind of shared this with me after the service um, earlier. Um, if they didn't want me to do things I wasn't supposed to do, they probably should not have given me an oar. <laughs> you know? Um, and yet God doesn't, when, when Jesus left, he didn't take away our abilities, did he? We still have the abilities to make decisions. We still have the abilities to do things. <clears throat> it's just a matter of are we making the right decisions or the wrong decisions. So I had an oar, and it might have been better off if I hadn't, because I was the guy who decided the guide at one point didn't see the big rock in front of us. And I knew that we were going to hit that rock, bounce off of it, capsize, and I'll die. <clears throat> um, so I put my oar in the water. And I don't think that I had as much as put the tip of my oar in the water before I heard, did I tell you to put that oar in the water? Nope. So I could make a decision on my own, which I, was, I thought I was going to do. Um, but the guy said, don't put the oar in the water. Do what I tell you to do. The Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit knows a whole lot more about the Father and the Father's will for our life than we do. I, mean, I want to take the direction. I want to do what I want to do. I've got, I've got my life planned out. I can't tell you how many times Cindy and I planned out our lives and said, we're going to go this, do this and do this and do this. And then the father says, no, you're not. You're going to move to Seattle. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, no, you're not. You're going to move to Iraq. Uh, no, you're not. You're going to. So again, every time that we thought, okay, we've got a plan. We know exactly what we're going to do. The father would say, hey, the spirit would say, are you listening to me? Are you following me? Are you out trying to make all these plans without the guide? How much better would life be if we would follow the guide? If we would allow the Holy Spirit to walk through us, to walk in us, how much easier would it be if we went to the Father about those decisions and said, Father, what do I do? Where do I go? What direction do I take? Here, Jesus shares with his disciples, I'm leaving. But when I leave, I'm going to give you the Spirit. I'm going to leave with you the Holy Spirit to direct you, to guide you, to convict you. Do you allow that Spirit to be your guide? He doesn't take the oar away. He just says, don't stick it in that water. Listen. Listen. Let me show you the way. We too often try to walk in our own way. Try to figure it out in our own source instead of going with the guide that he gives us. Let's pray. Father, I pray this morning that your Holy Spirit could fall afresh, could awaken us from our sleep, that we would recognize the need for a guide to move us through this life. 
a guide to show us your perfect plan, a guide to show us how to love those that we don't know how to love, a guide to show us how to live, how to work with those you've placed in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for not leaving us alone to try to figure out things in this world on our own. Thank you for giving us one who would be our guide, who would lead us. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.